Hey friends, this is Superintendent Mark, and I am just sharing some of my spiritual practices. They're my practices, they don't have to be your practices. I'm just sharing what helps me stay in tune with the Lord Jesus, although quite obviously for anybody that knows me, uh, I fall far short of that, as do we all. And yet there's a promise from God that we are partakers of his divine nature. That's intense to me and that we can be increasingly like Christ. So I know that's our goal and we can strive intentionally toward that. So I shared uh, in a couple of previous segments on my prayer and spiritual practices about the, I, the power of Lexio Divina, spiritual reading and prayer through scripture and the practice of the five finger prayer. But today, what I'd like to do is share with you the idea of rule of life. I have a rule of life. Uh, perhaps you do as well. Now, what is a rule of life? A rule of life is very simply an intentional plan to keep God at the center of your life, of all you do, of who you are. Obviously, uh, as I've shared before, prayer and reading through scripture is essential to virtually every Christian's walk with Jesus and a way to know uh, the heart and mind of the Lord so that we can begin to live out a life more reflective of God's grace and glory. But uh, it's also important just to recognize that, I mean, God has a claim over every aspect of our life our spirit, obviously, our mind, our body, our relationships. I love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, your spirit, and all your strength, your body. So as we think about this, I'm intrigued by the ancient Benedictine rule, the idea that a community of Christians and that a Christian can and should be guided by a rule. Now, I'm not a rules-based person by any means, and neither, by the way, was uh, St. Benedict. But when he talked about a rule of life, uh, he actually was talking about uh, a trellis. That's, uh, as you translate the idea, a word for trellis, the lattice work upon which uh, a vine grows so that it can bear fruit. Uh, that was what the Benedictine movement thought of as a rule, a trellis or a structure upon which God's fruitfulness can grow. I happen to believe in structure. I think it's so important. I'm grateful that God designed bones because without bones, my flesh would simply be a pile of mush on the ground. We need that structure. Uh, once while praying, this was, oh my word, maybe 20 years ago, uh, as I hit a standstill as a pastor and a spiritual leader, just crying out for a season, this is for years actually, crying out, God, I need a breakthrough. I, I need to see how better uh, can I lead these people in a way that is fruitful and helpful. And I prayed and I prayed. And as on occasion happens, I actually heard what I believe was the voice of God. And uh, when I have heard the voice of God, uh, I'm a, a trained counselor, by the way. I understand how dangerous that can sound. Uh, you know, if you talk to God, you're normal. If you hear from God, you're psychotic. But I believe I've actually heard from God a time or two in a very audible, clear way. And at this, this particular junction in my life and my ministry, I heard very clearly, plain as day, shook me to my soul, start gardening. And uh, I thought, oh, wow, you know, I had all these instant um, ideas from the scripture that came to mind about fruitfulness. And I began to actually physically start gardening. I believe I was being obedient to God. Uh, so as I was gardening in terrain that was very steep and very difficult, I began to realize that just planting seeds and watering them was absolutely insufficient. And the first thing I needed to do in order to be an effective gardener was build a structure, build a retaining wall, uh, create um, uh, oh my word, I'm forgetting, uh, the terraces begin to make it so that the fruit has a place to functionally grow. That was uh, an incredible insight for me 
as a pastor who essentially rejected structure. Everything is organic and all of that. But uh, the bottom line is, yes, everything's organic and all healthy, effective, organic things have a structure. So the idea of a rule of life or a structure upon which uh, we can allow the Holy Spirit to grow more fruitful in our lives um, has deep meaning for me as a result of that specific experience. So uh, what is a rule of life? Well, it, again, as I said, simply, it's a simple, proactive plan to keep God at the center of your life. And as you think about that, we are, a, you know, a very holistic people. We have body, mind, spirit, relationships. All of these are interconnected in significant ways. And we also have clear means of grace that God has already, through his word, the very word, I mean, God spoke to us uh, when he commanded us, for example, to pray without ceasing, and to meditate upon the word of God day and night, uh, to not forsake the assembling together. There, there are things clearly that the Lord has instructed us to do that can and should be part of every Christian's practices or rule of life. But when I think of a rule of life, I think of some very specific ways that we can pattern our life after uh, that have a, a couple of clear factors. One is a point of challenge, uh, and two is a point of blessing. Uh, and all of that is wrapped up in uh, the lattice work of being able to stay connected to God through prayer uh, and through scripture, all of which leads us, by the way, to action, which is both challenge and joy. So if you begin, I'll share with you my rule of life uh, in just a minute. But if you're to begin to think about writing a rule of life, a very simple statement, uh, that has a few key elements that you know because the Spirit has spoken to you, or you suspect perhaps because you know it's healthy and good, uh, that can just guide what you do. It's, it's kind of your, your checklist, your trellis, the structure upon which you specifically allow the fruit of the Spirit to grow. So uh, it can be, you know, you don't start by being St. Benedict. I, I sure uh, don't and, and didn't. Start small. I mean, if this is new for you, just start by clarifying these are two or three practices that I'm going to do, that I'm going to engage in for a specific period of time. And uh, then I will prayerfully evaluate how is this impacting my life? Those that were impactful and good continue. Those that felt like slavery or drudgery and were unhelpful discontinue, which is another aspect of a rule of life. It is, in fact, meant to liberate and allow fruit to grow, not to enslave and keep you in bondage to, you know, a checklist of things, particularly things that somebody other than the Holy Spirit and the Word of God directed you to do. We can all be overwhelmed by all the expectations that everybody else places upon us. But when you allow the expectations that God places upon you in specific to become your rule of life, then you discover, as Jesus said, that you can come to me when you're weary, because I will give you rest. My burden is light, my yoke is easy. So when the Lord directs you to do something, do it. And even though it's challenging, you'll find it to be life-giving, not a burden. And as Christ is yoked with us, that's what a yoke does. It yokes things together, yokes oxen together, and then to, um, uh, to a plow so that you can accomplish so much more. We're yoked with Christ, which means his strength becomes ours. So as you think about a rule of life, think about it from that perspective. What can bring increased life for you? How can you pattern your life after what you know Christ is asking you to do? And then be insistent and proactive on it. So very critical. Uh, it's actually interesting to me that in the book of Hebrews, it talks about uh, apathy in so far as there are those who have drifted away from the faith. And I think about that all the time because it takes virtually no effort at all to drift away. That's just being in your comfort zone, your status quo. It takes proactive effort. It takes uh, rowing your kayak against the, the, the stream, against the waves, against the wind in order to get to your destination. So uh, it's always a joy to get to the destination and the rule of life uh, helps you do that so that you don't drift away uh, into apathy with the lack of structure. Uh, so for me, what is all that? I'll just share with you what my rule of life is. Um, and different people are gonna have different things, different things that 
you need to get right with God, different things that will challenge you. And my rule of life has changed. I've been practicing the idea of a rule of life now for um, about 20 years uh, and 15 very insistently. Um, and so it isn't something that uh, is new to me, but my rule has changed uh, frequently over the years. So what is it now? Uh, as you think about your rule of life, by the way, think about stage of life. I had a different rule of life when I had four sons in my household. Now they're all gone. They've moved away. They're adults. They have their own kids. I have eight grandchildren. Thanks be to God. So that requires a different uh, set of practices, a different set of rules. When I was a, a local pastor and I lived and I breathed every day with neighbors and community institutions, my rule of life was very different in terms of evangelism and connecting with people. Uh, but then uh, when I was elected superintendent, I found myself on the road all the time and uh, finding it very difficult to be connected with a community. I was connected in communities through others and in various communities all around the country, but I no longer had life and breath in a community, uh, which by the way, was very disheartening for me. It still is. It's something I battle uh, spiritually in my heart um, almost every day. But having a rule of life for my stage of life, what I'm going through, uh, is super, super helpful. So you'll have your own, uh, but I'll, I'll share mine. First, it's all kind of uh, hinged upon, um, for me, uh, my, my life verse. I don't know if that's even really a thing. I mean, how, how can you just pick one out of all the verses in the Bible? But uh, what's guided me for, uh, for a long time, since entering the ministry, is Colossians 1.28. Uh, we proclaim him, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom that we may present everyone perfect in Christ. And to this end, I labor, struggling with all his energy which so powerfully works in me. I love that verse. And it's given me kind of the structure for how to live uh, as a spiritual leader, as a pastor, and now as a superintendent. And in light of all of that, my rule of life kind of flows from that, uh, that ethos, that understanding of my marching orders from Jesus. Uh, and it's this, there's a few things. My rule of life is, you know, a trellis. So I'm going to share it like a checklist, even though it's not meant to be rule-based. It's meant to be a trellis upon which uh, the fruit of the Spirit grows. So the first thing is to pray through Scripture. And I've shared in a previous video how I do that using Lexio Divina. So keeping Scripture uh, in the forefront so that I'm always praying and dialoguing with God listening to God for what the Spirit would say, but with Scripture is the heart of that. And the second thing is to pray uh, robustly uh, and for, uh, for all the different kinds of people in the world around me. And that's my five-finger prayer. I already shared uh, in depth about that, um, but I by no means invented that. I don't even know who did. I heard it, uh, I think, in a sermon once so many years ago. I just loved it, so um, I kind of stuck with it. Um, but then another thing that I try to do more regularly as a young pastor, I would fast uh, regularly uh, every Friday, uh, the day on which um, Christ was crucified, common uh, Christian practice to identify with Christ. Uh, so I would fast on Fridays. I don't actually do that regularly anymore. As I'm sharing this, perhaps I need to reevaluate, but I do engage in uh, the first Monday fast. And so of the first Monday of every month. And I picked that day because the Free Methodist Church USA has recommended that as a day of prayer and fasting. So I do that to align my heart and my life with my larger corporate body. Uh, and I don't mean corporate as business, uh, but I mean that that's the word for body or for an organization. So, um, so I do that to try to keep my prayer focus, um, not just locally, but regionally and globally, uh, through fasting. That's a regular practice, part of my rule of life. Uh, and then the other rule I have is help the stranded. Uh, this is a rule that I implemented when I was first elected superintendent, three or four years into it, and I realized I'm not really having the same evangelistic opportunities I used to have. And then it occurred to me, I'm driving all the time. And as I began to look up and see, there were people stuck on the road all the time. So 
on a regular basis, I mean, at least weekly, I have opportunity to help somebody stranded on the side of the road. By the way, that has been a, an incredible spiritual practice, uh, one that has literally led to saving lives. I found a guy that w- was slumped over. He'd had a heart attack. And uh, had I not pulled over, uh, we could not have called an ambulance to come and rescue him. And I connected him then with the church in Iowa, by the way. Um, so uh, that's just one example. The, the only time that I saved a physical life, but I've had opportunity to share the gospel with so many people, some who have responded to Christ on the spot. Uh, and in fact, that just happened just a couple of months ago. Here where I live, there was a, a group of people from Modesto that were stranded uh, high up in the mountains on Route 108 at night. Uh, what a terrifying experience for them. Uh, so I had a good opportunity along with my wife to shepherd them back to Modesto. And, and, and by the way, that's a haul. Um, and help make sure they got their car uh, towed away and everything. And to share the gospel. Because when you're driving people to Modesto from Sonora Pass, you got a lot of time to talk. And uh, one of the young men uh, gave his life to Christ. So exciting. So you know, that's how I've kind of geared that aspect of my life. How do I share the gospel? For me, my rule of life that means stop and help the stranded. Uh, and then another aspect of my rule of life is physical exercise. Uh, that's, by the way, uh, leaning in the challenge for me. Um, I so much more prefer watching reruns of Star Trek and eating potato chips than exercising. But, um, and I'm not, this is one area where I, I fall down on, but I do exercise regularly. And uh, when I'm following my rule of life, well, this is a spiritual revelation to me. I need to keep uh, the body that God blessed me with as healthy as possible um, and not allow that to become a bad testimony to my family, to myself, or others. So uh, it's a constant struggle, but that is part of my rule of life, physical exercise on a weekly basis. For me, that means uh, three times a week lifting weights and two times a week uh, doing either elliptical or biking uh, and or hiking wherever possible. Uh, and then in terms of relationships, for so long, uh, my work schedule was intense. Bivocational pastor, uh, teacher in seminary and full-time pastor. Uh, I've always had two or three jobs going on. And I've always tried to make time for my wife. But there was a stage in our relationship where it became really clear to me that it was insufficient. And uh, the most important thing in my life, other than Jesus, is my wife. I love her more than anything. and She loves me. It's the absolute best thing in my life. And so part of my spiritual rule is to have daily connection with my wife. And when there are days when we can't see each other because she's working and I'm working and uh, and that's happening, we make sure we text or call each other. We just have daily connection. That's a spiritual rule of life. And uh, with my kids not at home, I have as a spiritual rule of life connecting weekly with my kids and hopefully as as often as I do that with my grandchildren. Um, So that's how I kind of look at at my relational um, efforts and how I try to stay healthy. Uh, And for me, if I don't have it as a rule, if I don't have it as something I know that I've committed to God to do, that he's asked me to do, then I let it slough off and I cannot pay attention to these things. Um, So the final thing in my current rule of life so you've seen the things that I've had for a rule of life is to have an annual adventure. So I like to have um, adventure in my life. Uh, I absolutely crave it. I thrive on it. Perhaps I'm a thrill seeker. Uh, raising my kids, uh, my wife, I don't know uh, how she stuck with me so long. We we developed our family motto, if it can't kill you, it's not worth doing it. So we, you know, push things to the limit pretty regularly. And I actually think our kids benefited from it, but I know I certainly uh, loved it. So every year I try to plan some way in which um, my wife and I or I can have some sense of uh, an unusual adventure to explore in a new part of the world or country, to uh, explore uh, engaging with new people and new people groups that will push me beyond my my ethnocentric limits. So adventure can look different from year to year, but I try to plan on that on an annual basis. That gives life to me. That's kind of the joy-giving part of all of this. Well, that's my rule of life. 
It's a rule of life that uh, is intended to keep God at the center of everything and that I've developed through listening to God. So for grins and giggles, I hope you will consider uh, prayerfully crafting a rule of life. And uh, as you craft that, just make sure that uh, you're crafting something that you can live with that's appropriate for your season of life. That is something that you've prayed through and you've asked God to reveal to you. What are areas of your life that you need to see growth in and to see Christ more evident in? Uh, and I hope that as you do that, you'll allow the great command of Jesus to be your guide in terms of its scope. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. So keeping God at the center of all of this, how are you engaging your mind? How are you engaging your heart? How are you engaging your body? How are you engaging your spirit? And we all live in relationships. So how are we engaging in healthy relationships? Well, all right. So rule of life, please write one out. Let it contain one, two, or three things. Do it for a month or two uh, or longer if it has a longer scope. And I'd love to hear from you. What kind of impact is following a rule of life? Is having a structure or a trellis upon which the fruit of the Spirit can grow in your heart. What kind of impact is that having? Um, well, thank you for listening. And um, there's no wrong way to engage Christ through prayer uh, and engaging him in your spiritual practices. The really only bad way is to not do it at all and let your first love wither away through apathy. So stay proactive and engage in spiritual practices.